Welcome everyone to another episode of T2 Hot Seat. And today uh, we have a very special guest with us and she's none other than Tintin from Great Britain. So Tintin, you want to say hi to everyone? Hi everyone. Awesome, awesome. And look, we're really thankful that you're able to get some time out today of your busy schedule to really meet us and have a chat. Um, so thank you very much for that. And I guess we're just going to get right into it. But, you know, like all the other episodes that we start with, uh, we have this very special segment called a T2 Hot Seat. Um, so I'm just going to briefly explain the rules and regulations to everyone out there who's not sure what this is about. So it's just going to be a simple game. Uh, and today we have Teen Tin that will be playing this game with us. So what's going to happen is uh, she's going to be given 60 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. And uh, she's only be going to be able to answer it once. Uh, and obviously each correct answer that she's going to give us, she's going to get one point. And in this 60 seconds, um, in the final 24 seconds of it, she will get her points doubled for every correct answer. And Tintin, if you do not know or understand any of my questions, you can say skip and then I'll just move on to the next one. So it's going to be really quick and we'll see how many questions uh, you're going to get right or wrong at the end of it. And the good news is that we're going to have like a virtual leaderboard. Um, so we, we're kind of like having like a fantasy challenge kind of thing. So at the end of it, Tintin, if you are able to talk all the other competitors or all the other players that we interview, uh, you, you might receive a very special gift from us. <laughs> yeah, so look forward to that. But yeah, no pressure at all. Uh, <laughs> if you're good to go, just give me a thumbs up and I'll just get the game going. What is the national flower of England? Uh, right. When was Facebook created? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? I can't hear you. When was Facebook created? If you're not sure, you can skip. Skip. Where was table tennis invented? Uh, England. How many medals did Great Britain win in the recent 2020 Olympics? In total. Uh, 100. According to Google, Google, what is the most played sport in London? Uh, what is the river that flows through London? River Thames. What is the size of a table tennis ball? 40 plus. Solve this, 98 divided by 2. 98 divided by 2. Uh, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. One minute is up. Ninety-eight oh divided by two. God. Yeah, no, it's all right. It's cool. Like you know, as I said, no pressure at all. But I think you did pretty well. Uh, you're obviously still studying right now, am I right? How has it been for you, like in uni, and obviously being a table tennis player like yourself? Like, has it been easy? Has there been any really really tough days? Um. So I. I'm in mean, my third year of uni. Uh, my first year mm. was pretty tough because I wasn't used to it and I was still trying to train as much as a full time today does. But that was pretty yeah. tough. Um, second year got better because of um, yep. COVID, everything went online. But this year, um, this year I'm doing like, my dissertation and everything like that. So it's a bit harder. Um, it's hard to juggle the two, but um, I'm trying. <laughs> and I, I, I've done it my whole life, really. So just try to continue with that. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Well, I think you're doing great so far. And obviously, um, you had a lot of things on your plate as well, even uh, before what we're speaking right now. Like, you know, with the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, you, you were part of it, am I right? Yeah. How, how has the training of that, you know, have actually affected or maybe make your university life a bit more different as compared to others? Do you, could you just share some light on that? Um. As in because I, I went to the Olympics? Or is that what yeah, because you, you yeah. were in the Olympics, so yeah. Yeah, um, I guess, yeah, I guess it was different because, you know, when you talk to people and then they find out that you've been training and they ask for questions and then someone mentions that you've been to the Olympics and then you get lots of reactions. So, um, yep. yeah, I guess in that sense, you feel, you, yeah, you feel quite special. Um, but at the same time, I don't know that many people in my course because, um, because of like table tennis and I took a gap year and stuff like that. So I guess mm. like, in one sense it's quite cool, but other part is also like quite lonely because I don't know that many people. Um, so yeah, there's like a mix of the, 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 the Well, 
that was like a few months ago and right now have you got back on track with university have you finally got used to things yeah definitely um yeah the last few weeks have been quite hard getting back into somewhat of a routine i don't really have a routine yep. schedule changes <laughs> so much but um yeah yeah it's been good and i'm enjoying the challenge yeah this is what right. i'm happy to do. it's great that's great. That's great. And would you consider yourself like a morning person or are you more productive at night? Definitely a morning person. Why I scheduled this? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, um, and maybe just another question as well. Like, you know, do you want to maybe give us what's a day in the life of Tintin looks like right now, like in university? What is it like for you? Um, yeah, like I said, the schedule changes so much, but I guess I can give my schedule for today um yeah so yeah i wake up i wake up around like six um i was about to study but i didn't study but like yeah then had the interview and i've got um like just like meetings so i've got a meeting about my dissertation at nine and then like a lecture and then another meeting so then i train i don't want to do stuff practice that about three thirty, and then i've got a gym at four to five and then training um, wow. So, okay. Yeah. So it, it changes a lot. So like tomorrow will be completely different. So, oh yeah. wow! But but do you still try to get into? Yeah. But do you still try and like maybe slot in like trainings every day, or do, do you like do it whenever you can? Um, yeah, my plan is I, I normally schedule in training once a day now. Mm. Um, but so I wish I could play twice, so I might try to change my like plans around soon. Maybe next week to try to get these sessions in sometimes, but. Yeah, currently it's once a day, but I definitely try to get it once a day. Yeah, that's good. That's great. And right now, I guess, um, when you're not doing university or when you're not having any meetings or even playing table tennis, do you do anything outside of it? Like, do you have any hobbies or? Uh, I used to have quite a lot of hobbies, but I haven't <laughs> been able to pick them up. I like, like drawing oh, and stuff yeah. like that. No, 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 it's okay. But like recently, I've just been going on walks with my friends. And more just like catching up with friends, I think that's mm. cool. And just going to socials and things like that because COVID is, isn't as bad now in the UK, so things are opening up so we can do that. So. Yeah, that's great. Must have been great. Like obviously with the restrictions being eased, you're able to spend more time with your family and your friends. Uh, is that something that obviously was pretty was pretty tough for everyone last year, am I right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I think the yeah. UK was a bit lucky. We could still meet up with someone outside. Definitely. It's great that you are spending a lot of time with friends and families and I get just socially outside because we don't normally get to do that in this current world that we live in. It's a bit hard sometimes. Uh, but yeah, it's great that you are doing all of those. And you know, you mentioned that you'd like to do a bit of drawing. Do, do you actually have you do you have any drawings that you can show us or anything at all? Yeah. Uh, no, not not with me because I'm in a different because last year I might have yeah, yeah. I've, I've just mm. moved, so I don't have anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair. Um, but yeah, what do you normally so, draw? Um, like what kind of things you draw? Yeah, I like drawing like words. So I like lettering. So I like making quotes. Things. Like, um, ah. like that. Yeah. Or like making cards. I like making cards. That's a big thing. Because I like doing it's it. great. Because I have more motivation and, to do it for someone <laughs> than just for myself. Have you like, have you like um, started doing a lot of, when you actually first started doing it like what made you actually decide to take up the pen and just draw yeah. those letters and stuff um i i did art like in my in my school and i really enjoyed that mm -hmm. and then i don't know i think my friend like one of my best friends she's really good at art so i kind of just like follow what other people do as well so, <laughs> um and, and like yeah i thought how art was really cool and it kind of inspired me and i think uh kind of social media as well you kind of see it on instagram and stuff so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Ah, oh, so we could definitely go to your profile on Instagram and have a look at some of the drawings that you've done. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have a page for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you, sh you should start. I, I don't know, but maybe if you if you want to, you can start creating a page of your own and yeah. start sharing your yeah. depression to everyone. Because yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure some of your fans around the world, yeah. especially. Uh, they will be keen to see what you can draw as well, apart from playing table tennis. I think that's something great. I say that I can draw, it doesn't mean I'm good at drawing. <laughs> <It's a difference. laughs> well, that's great. Um, and I, I guess something else that I really want to know, I guess fans around the world want to know is that, you know, apart from 
obviously you, you, there will be some off seasons for you uh, where you're not really training that much. Um, is there something that you always look forward to in that period of time or has it always been like really busy with university and you haven't actually had the time to think about it? Um, so I guess I like spending, again, like spending time with family. I also like mm. doing other things like going, like just having a day out or like going to the gym a bit more because now I don't have as much time. So I just like doing mm. other things around that and there's just a bit more. But I guess apart from table tennis, is there any other sport that you watch or you play yourself? Or when you're growing up, do you do any other sports? Uh, no, because, yeah, I grew up just playing table tennis. But I recently enjoyed watching tennis. Um, obviously, ah. because, like, Radicano won the US Open, so it does a lot of hype. So I, I watched the yep. tennis there. But that's, I've only just started, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, they're both very similar. Do you, do you ever see yourself picking up a tennis racket and start going at it? Like, have you ever thought of trying it out? And I've never thought about that, but maybe maybe I'll think about it now. But no, I just enjoy watching it. And yeah, I guess there are some similarities. Yeah, tennis is pretty cool. Uh, but obviously table tennis is your true passion and the sport that you really love. Can you maybe just share with us like, what kickstarted your career in table tennis? Was there like a certain figure in your life that spurred you on or was it just something that you just had to do on your own? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my dad coached me and my brother. I started when I was five, but I probably picked up mm. on that earlier than that. So, yeah, definitely my dad and my brother have been two major figures in that. So, yeah, my dad, um, he used to coach. Oh, no, he does coach, and he used to play uh, for Hong Kong. Mm. So he, he's got a massive passion for the sport as well. So. And I guess, did they have, like, dreams? And S- did they ever think that you would end up in the Olympic team? Did they ever have cast that vision onto you before? Uh, I think maybe it was mentioned maybe like once in a newspaper interview that my dad gave, but he's never mentioned it to me personally. Um, mm. so I'm not. I'm not sure actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's something you can ask him the next time you see him. Like, did he ever imagine her daughter to be in the Olympics team, representing uh, obviously Great Britain in the sport that obviously he grew up in and he actually played himself. I think that's something that every parent will be proud of. I'm sure of it. Could you maybe just describe to us, like, what was it, what does it feel like on the very first day or the very first time you actually get to wear that jersey on you representing Great Britain? Uh, yeah, I felt very proud, obviously. Um, it was really cool just, you know, just being around the Team GB atmosphere. Um, I felt mm. quite special. And, yeah, and my confidence kind of boosted because I was with the team as well, and that was all really cool. So, yeah, it definitely motivated me for the future. I just felt very proud. and. Like I said, mm. like freedom. I could just, you know, yeah, everyone's already like happy with me, and I could just go out there and just play. So, yeah. That's great. And th- is there any stories or any interesting things that happened during your Tokyo twenty twenty Olympics? I guess um, uh, Andy Murray like spoke to us a bit, and his brother Jamie was watching uh, me and Tom Tom Jones were practicing, and Jamie Murray yeah. was there watching, and we like had a conversation with them. So and 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 also Andy as well. So that was really cool. Um, oh, and also Tom, Tom Daly also walked in um, and he was very uh, friendly and very happy so that was really cool. So I guess meeting those people. <laughs> I guess right now, do you see yourself obviously competing at the 2024 Paris Olympics? Is it something that's in your vision or in your goals right now? Um, yeah, it's in the back of my mind. Like, I know it'll be very tough because like, obviously my studies would have progressed by then. But yeah, but with like 2020, I knew that was also really tough. So it is in the back of my mind. I can kind of mm. obviously be able to do what you do not many have the opportunity to do so uh and i guess the fact that you know table tennis is pretty much rooted in you from your family and you really love it i can see that you're really passionate about it uh so, so i guess i just want to ask like maybe have you ever felt like you know table tennis got a bit draining was there any part in your life whereby you felt like table tennis was a bit draining for you or you had a bit of down periods at all was there any of this those days that happened before um yeah definitely i think less Mm. now um but when i was younger um i did Mm. feel um i guess because my dad was so passionate i felt like i want i really wanted to do well um, yeah my family so it did it did get to me a bit but i think now it's a lot better because yeah i'm managing to just learn from uh, but also, mm. I feel very lucky that I, I can do both. Like, it's a, it's a huge privilege for me. So, like, there's not really much I can complain about as well. So it's just, like, the opportunity.
Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. And I, I guess something else that a lot of players face as well, you know, like what you said, growing up, you know, there was always those few days where you were down. And I guess something that people didn't think about as well is that table tennis can be very mentally draining as well, especially when you have really high standards for yourself uh, and you go to a competition and you didn't perform the way you want. Can you maybe just share with us, um, oh yeah, share with us some experiences that you had dealing with those mental toughness in table tennis and how you overcome it? Like, have you got an experience to share? Um, I guess it does happen quite a lot because, you know, the competitions are so hard nowadays. You go, like, really far and then you could lose, like, the first round. Um, mm. I don't know. I think just, yeah, just keep working. I don't I don't have anything in particular. But, um, yeah, for me, I'm just trying to, I'm working a lot on my psychology. So I'm working with a sports psychologist to try to, like, think about, like, things about that. I think maybe that could help if you talk to someone or, I don't yeah. know, I think just learning from each thing. So I think it's great that you have a sports psychologist to help you out with this journey of yours. Because like, and what you said before as well is that it's always good to have a someone that you can talk to. Uh, because if you don't have that someone that you can reach out to, it can be a bit daunting. It can eat you up inside out. So yeah, it's great. And this sports psychology is a sports psychologist of yours. Is that obviously from the Great Britain team, or is it part of the university you're in, or is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's actually part of the university because um, mm. they're quite big on sports, so they've got like psychologists if you need a nutritionist and stuff like that. So yeah, again, very lucky. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. A lot of a lot yeah. of support from your university. Yeah. I think that's yeah, great. Definitely. Yeah, awesome. Well, I guess moving on now as well. Um, could you like maybe share with us one of your favorite winning moments or maybe your favorite event that you have participated in so far in your life? Uh, I guess there are two. So my favorite winning moment is probably when I won my first national championship because um, mm. it was a tough year and. Um, so about maybe five years before that, I kept getting to some years or the final, so winning it. And also my dad was in the corner as well. So that was like one of the best moments, I think. Um, but the second the tournament I love playing in is the Commonwealth Games. Um, mm. So yeah, so it's again the summer. But yeah, I just really enjoyed being part of the team, especially in the team event. We won that medal last time. So that was a really cool thing. You can't really like experience that elsewhere. So that was cool. Yeah, fair enough. And I was just curious, like, you know, having like fans and no fans, because obviously in Tokyo 2020, uh, we didn't see any fans at all in, in the competition hall. Is that something that you actually like to, is that like an environment that you like to be in? Yeah, I don't actually know, because um, I'm very used to just playing without a crowd, but also with a crowd, so I think mm. either works for me, because yeah, I quite, I quite like just like being like, you know, not in the centre of everything, so probably without, but then at the same time, the crowd definitely helps can really boost up your confidence there during these well. mm. I don't know, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But have you ever tried or have you ever experienced playing in a venue or like an environment where the crowd is just against you? Have you ever experienced yeah. any of that before? How, how is yeah. that for you? Was, was that difficult? Yeah, it was actually the Commonwealth Games, uh, the bronze mm. medal match. We played against Australia and I was in yeah. Australia. So yeah. yeah, we had a, it was cool. But I actually, I actually enjoyed it as well because I had the team behind me. Um, Great. Like yeah, like Maria, like my teammate, she was like screaming her head off. So all I could hear was her, like my head. Except like there was a crowd against me, but I think no, I, I didn't enjoy it because they they just won a good game at the end of the day, and I felt like I gave them that. So yeah, it's just nice to also see people enjoy table tennis, even if they cheer against me. Just nice to see them like mm. football and just yeah, get involved. So. Obviously, right now with uh, the whole COVID situation finishing up, or like obviously getting better. Uh, where do you see, I guess, where, where do you see table tennis in Great, Great Britain grow into in the next few years? Like, do you have any hopes and dreams for table tennis as a sport? Do you wish that it will maybe get as popular as football, maybe? Yeah, definitely. I really do hope it will get more popular and people will not just play it more, but they'll get involved and watch it and not being so much of like, oh, like, I didn't really say table tennis and like, oh, is it a sport? Like that sort of stuff. So I'll be very nice if it kind of progresses. Over there, like, do you see? Is there a lot of like your university classmates or friends that plays table tennis before or knows about the sport, or is it something that is still very unpopular over there? Um, in the University of Nottingham, table tennis is mm. one of the like the best for, for in the UK. So, 
and we get yeah. a lot of attention. So I think my uni is, is a good to compare. So everyone knows about, most people do know about table tennis. Um, but I'll say in the other universities, definitely not. Is there any, maybe any other play, table tennis players out there that you really look up to in terms of the game or maybe the style of play? Is there anyone out there that you get yeah, respect? Yeah, I really enjoy watching um, Mima Ito because she's really fast and yeah, um, I, I've been in China with her a few times so I've watched the train as well. So I just really like how she is, like how she works really hard and like her game as well. H have, you, have you actually played with her or against her before or went up against her? Uh, only when I was maybe 15. Um, I played her quite a lot, but now I haven't played her for ages. So obviously if you were to be in yeah, the same group stages or the same competition in her, do you think you can beat her right now at your current form or it's probably going to be a bit of a tough game, you think? Definitely will be a tough game, but you never know, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not sure. <laughs> No, nah, it's fine, it's fine. And look, at the end of the day, it's anybody's game. Like, you start the game with without any advantages. So you could come up winning it, you could come up losing it. But at the end of the day, I think what you really want to achieve out of it is just to give your best. Am I right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, well, look, thanks so much for everything. But maybe before we close out this call, um, is there maybe that one motto or like a motto in life that you actually live towards or that you yeah preach about every day in your life? Uh, I, I have quite a few mottos, but one that is, I don't, I've been thinking about this over the past few days, but um, like seize the day. I don't know if you've seen the film, it's called Dead Poet Society, and the Latin is Carpe Diem, but it's like the teachers are like, seize the day, so I like that as well. <laughs> Did you get it? Seize the day. <laughs> seize the day, ah, oh, that's the yeah. one. Oh, okay, wow. That's a very, very good <laughs> motto, actually. That literally, you just like go into every day knowing that Mm -hmm. You just got to give your best and obviously seizing every opportunity that you have out there. Am I right? Is that something that you yeah. agree with? Yes, you, wow. you explained it much better than I did. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for this call um, that we have. Obviously, you know, we get to know a bit more about you and I guess what really spurred you on to continue pursuing this dream of yours. A lot of us will be inspired by what you do and really just how you do it as well because not everyone can do what you do. So. That's great. Well, thank you so much for this, your time. And yeah, we'll speak soon and hopefully we'll see each other in person once more and we can probably have a great time. All right. Thank see you ya, so Tintin. Thank you.